and Nate Diaz. Contender making his way to the octagon and looking to leave as the new undisputed UFC lightweight champion of the world. He has bided his time, waiting for this title shot. He's got the winning streak. He has the quality of opposition. Now he's fighting the number one guy in the world. He believes he's the best. Now his opportunity to prove it just a few minutes away. gentlemen you know this is a belt that frequently changes hands well it hasn't since it's been wrapped around this guy's waist given all the skills he brings to the table the question is fighting a challenger like this can he hold on to the belt if he can just another chapter in the greatness of one of the best lightweights this octagon has ever seen for this, our main event of the evening. Poirier is 31, Diaz is 35. He is three inches taller. He will have a four inch reach advantage. All right, now for the official introductions, we go inside the octagon where we find Bruce Buck. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, a referee in charge of the octagon, Eve Loving. This is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the sold-out T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC lightweight championship of the world introducing first fighting out of the blue corner this man is a jiu-jitsu fighter holding a professional record of 21 wins 12 losses he stands six feet tall weighing in at 155 pounds fighting out of stockton california usa presenting the challenger Nate. And now, introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a boxer, holding a professional record of 26 wins, six losses, and one no contest. He stands five feet nine inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, USA, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC lightweight champion of the world. Dustin the Diamond Poirier! UFC belt online, guys. Protect yourself at all time, obey my command at all time. If you want to touch love, do it now, go back to your corner. You ready? So here we go with round one. Seems to be a situation in which he wants to do everything in his power to keep this fight on the feet. He appears to have a lot of advantages at distance. We'll see if he can get it done to us. Yes, he has all the advantages because we don't see many specialists anymore in the UFC. Guys can generally do everything, but this guy is a jiu-jitsu player. He wants to get the fight to the ground and start to weave his web of traps to try and find a submission. This striker needs to maintain his space. He needs to make sure he is not on the ground 
avoid it at all costs. Overhand punch to the head, blocked though by Diaz. Left hand punch to the clinch. Oh! Dude's hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. Really making good use of his reach advantage there with that punch. He has a commitment to kicking tonight and sure. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Oh, beautiful jab from Nate Diaz. If he gets that weapon going early, could be trouble. Yeah, he starts touching you with the jab over and over again. And then when he starts to let that right hand fly, you start to see real big reactions from his opponents. Good punch land. So a nice shot there defensively to raise the guard and prevent any damage. Those hands never leave where they're supposed to be. And if you do that, most times you will block the shot that's incoming. Diaz's lower jaw now starting to show signs of swelling. Oh, big hook. That'll sting. Just over two minutes to go in what has been a furious round one. Oh, nice shot. Yes. That's what I'm Under about. two minutes to go. Nine. So just over 20 total strikes have landed for Dustin Poirier. Oh, right, then a left. Able to land there with the straight left. Look at the whip action that comes from him throwing that kick. Oh, he lands the Superman punch. How about it? Oh. Just out of the range with that right hand. Good stick. And both guys really throwing with authority. Nice connection there by Nate Diaz. Not a guy you want to let get going here on the feet, DC. No, because it's all downhill with Nate, right? It's the activity that will overwhelm his opponents. And this looks like the start of that. Well, the left hook has been there at times, not that time. Beautiful straight punch there. His boxing fundamentals are just so clean. Oh, he looks so sharp tonight. He's got a serious right punch, and he went to it effectively there. It is his money shot, and he will continue to throw it until he finds a knockout. All right, so we now look back at some of the action from that previous round, DC. A lot of good highlights on both sides. I mean, a lot of good highlights from both competitors. They both should be very proud of what they accomplished. But I'm telling you, man, I'm not sure they can keep this up. If they land at this clip for another five minutes, somebody's this going to sleep. Want to go back to the boxing game. Let's keep that going. This All right, here we go. Round two. Dustin the Diamond Pori. You ready? Versus Nate Diaz. Big ball punch land. Now he gets back to range. Woo! Woo! Oh, huge strike lands there, and somehow his opponent's chin held up. His opponent's chin held up, but you do not want to be on the receiving end of those types of strikes. He's got to be careful dipping his head when he's throwing that jab. Well, you see him land the jab there. He's got the reach advantage. You might as well use it. Sound defensively blocks the shot. Well, now if you're the opponent, you really got to be careful as Diaz is able to find a home for that right hand yet again. When Diaz starts landing the right hand, you have got to stay firm. You have got to dig your heel in the ground and say, no way you're going to just run me over. Easier said than done when you're facing Nathan Diaz. So we call on the numbers here. 40 total strikes have already landed for Nate Diaz. And connecting with a 39% accuracy rate here tonight against Dustin Poirier. Look at him chopping the wood. Chop the wood with those leg kicks. Nice punch land. All right, good job by him there to raise the guard and protect his head. He's doing a good job of keeping the guard high, blocking his head, making sure he's not taking those damaging strikes up top. Oh, he just missed on that overhand left. So a much different approach from him here in round two. Took him a while to find. His opponent seems to be on his way out of the fight. Oh, nice slip to avoid that right hand. And he connects with a punch there. We'll see if he can follow it up. He's landed that punch over and over again. What's he going to do to follow up? 
just out of range with the straight left hand. Well, he continues to do a nice job here defensively protecting the head and sort of maybe letting his opponent gas out a little. Look like it did stun him a little bit. What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Go finish his fight. One minute to go. Nice stick with the right hand. All right, he closes the distance, gets the single collar tie. Well, no surprises, he connects once again, and that looked like it landed right on that cut. Right on the cut, and he's targeted it, right? He's looking, you can see him almost putting a laser beat on that cut and just putting his hands on it. It doesn't take much, he just keeps making his split, showing his opponent that he has no mercy. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow? So there's the end of the round. He stayed committed to doing damage upstairs and landed a seminal blow in that round. It was accumulation of those strikes. He kept hitting him over and over to the head. Eventually, he found the, the one that really did damage his opponent. Here we go, third round of this championship fight. Fourier's shot there is blocked. Well, just as he did in the previous round, he continues to connect on a high volume of strikes. And a good... Right to the target. Let's see if his opponent can survive. I cannot believe he is still standing after taking that fight. Plans a good combination. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Well, he's looking for that left hand. Just out of range, though, with it. Ah, oh, that jab hurt him. All right, he engages in a single collar tie here. Now he gets a more dominant position with the other hand. He is going to start to drive knees over and over. You got to be careful here. You got to move. 75 total strikes have landed for Dustin the Diamond Poirier. And if you care about the efficiency, connecting with a 37% accuracy rate against him. It's the best strike he's thrown tonight. The biggest shot that he's landed all night. A massive uppercut land. All right, so a good job by him here. He continues to block. Oh! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Well, we talked about that reach advantage as you see him land the straight punch there. Great. Oh! Trying to stay in this fight! He needs to start looking at the finish line because he's got to hurt very bad. Well, he's in a compromising spot here, DC. You got to figure out a way to get back to your feet. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Oh, his opponent squirming like a fish out of water now. The ground and pound is on point. This could very well be the beginning of the end. This could be the beginning of the end. We've seen some really good ground and pound fighters. This young man is as good as any we've ever seen. Outstanding pressure from top position here by Diaz. Under a minute now to go. Diaz is going for the sub here. Oh, oh we're getting a finish here. This might just be a matter of time. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. So the fighter was really caught in the submission there just as the horn sounded. Safe to say he was saved by the bell there. So back to the stools they go. 60 seconds to recover here. We're going to fight on, ladies and gentlemen. Another round coming up. 
Ron, let's now look back at some of the action from that round. He went headhunting, landed, nearly got the finish, too. A lot of coaches tell you don't headhunt. In this case, he's been headhunting, and he landed a big enough shot to truly put his opponent on notice. All right, here we go. The tension is palpable. Fourth round is underway. You've got a thing or two to say about these championship rounds. The fourth round is easily the hardest round of fighting. You're so used to fighting up to three. You've got to get back off of that stool, and this is a real test of your will and desire to win a fight. He blocks the punch. You can really limit the mobility of your opponent with those legs. Oh. He's hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. He might be out. Notice the drive. Look at how they drive the knee right into the midsection. Oh. He didn't like that left hand. He's got him right here. And just inches away from landing one of those big right hands. Yeah, it looks a little wobbly on his feet. Oh, he dove and he lands. Wow! What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Go finish his fight. Oh! Oh! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish. Oh, he might be out. And just like that, the fight is over. Yeah, that right there is a high-level knockout, ladies and gentlemen. Crowd absolutely loving it. Just a perfect shot to end the fight. Landed flush. I'm not even sure his opponent saw it coming. So a huge, huge win for that young fighter here tonight. All right, let's get you some replays now. Certainly a lot for our replay guys to work with in the truck. This was a clinic tonight in terms of mixed martial arts acumen in every realm of the game. A full-on display of all of his skills. He did everything in this championship-winning performance. He used his wrestling. He used his elbows. He used his pace and pressure to really wear down his opponent so that he can get his hand raised. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Levine is called to stop to this contest at 2 minutes, 18 seconds of round number 4. Declaring the winner by knockout and still. So there he is, the still UFC lightweight champion of the world. A lot of steam here during fight week that maybe there were a few things